The customs chief announced that the government has initiated efforts to address the protesters' concerns about rising food prices and related costs. Specifically, the federal government, is, he said, is actively implementing a multi-pronged uh, strategy to combat food inflation, including fiscal policies and targeted interventions. Now, one such intervention involves the recent distribution of essential food items from the National Green Reserves, which occurred about uh, a month ago. Now, public affairs analyst and uh, Mustafa Iwinla joins me now for more conversations on this uh, topic. Good morning to you, Mustafa. Good morning, Justin. Thank you for having me. All right. A whole lot uh, is going on uh, with uh, all that happened since last week with the protest and uh, the first and broadcast and Nigerians still saying that uh, their demands uh, were not met during the president's speech and um, how they still are battling with food crisis. Uh, the customs uh, chief is in the news. Yesterday they had a Security Council meeting and uh, where he talked about uh, import uh, waivers and customs duty. But let's talk about food security generally before we get into the specifics now. Uh, going back to what the President said in his speech and um, uh, the reality on ground, would you really say that um, food security is going to be stemmed in the board anytime soon? Okay, so to, to, to cut to the chase, I think it is very important that we you know, even look at the, the root cause of this problem. Mm -hmm. You see, the issue of our national security is not something we should play politics with. The issue with our socioeconomic problems is not also something we should play politics with. Mm. So I tell you that uh, if you have studied what happened in the past couple of days, you will see that the major cause of this protest is food inflation. Mm. And if you want to even look at it further, even general inflation on other goods and services. And... Um, I think that uh, for the uh, you know, custom boss to come up with that policy, I think is a step in the right direction. But also, I also fear that uh, it might cripple our local farmers. Mm -hmm. So the thing, what I think, what so 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 the fact that is for a short period of time makes it make sense, because if we reduce the cost of import duties, mm. if we reduce the cost of tax that you know people pay to import most of the food items that we consume right now because obviously we don't you know uh, manufacture a lot of the things we consume here for now mm. and that's why we're saying that our local farmers needs to be you know you know there should be some sort of intervention for them mm. they cannot look at what however state just did you know the tra tractors and all that those are measures to help improve that sector food is a big problem mm. and again let me tell you it's not only in nigeria that we have food inflation but it's just that our food inflation in nigeria right now is is on the rise currently our food inflation right now is put to about 40 percent the general inflation is put to about 38 percent in the united kingdom the uh, general inflation is about say let's say four percent yeah. food inflation is about 1.5 percent in america their food their general inflation is about two point i think 2.5 percent food inflation is about 5.8 percent so you see that the way our inflation is going in Nigeria, it is on the rise, and that's why people can no longer food. Food mm. in Nigeria now is now luxury. Food that's supposed to be an essential thing is now luxury in Nigeria. And that's why we're saying that we cannot continue like this. If you look at, again, all the issue of, say, this, the slightest issue, we come up with palliatives of distributing rice. Those are one of the problems we're having. If you go to the UK, for example, they pay child support when you give birth. When you're out of job, they give you benefits pending when you get a job again. So these are socioeconomic problems that our government also needs to look into. We have thousands of Nigerian youth that are jobless. The government is not looking at them. That's mm. why there's a lot. Of, that's why you look at what is happening in the north. Taraba, Kaduna, all these states are currently in a mess. Mm. In fact, most of them have declared curfew. Go to Kano. Is the, the protest was you know it took a different turn entirely the police got overwhelmed and that's one of the issues so in a country where we have three three hundred and seventy one thousand policemen and we have 220 million nigerians it is difficult to curtail issues when they happen when they go out of hand because obviously there's a power in the numbers of the people okay but so generally i think that for the customs to come up with a uh, reduction in the import duties and taxes is a good idea, is a novel idea. All right. But I just think that we should also be careful not to cripple our local, local farmers. production. I get all of that now, but the question would be, uh, 
if they are given such waivers and uh, you know tax holidays for food uh, importation, and it's just for a short time, after that particular time elapses, what happens to the to the price of um, commodity, especially food stuff? You know, it brings me to something you talked about, Kataraba. You know, trying to boost its agricultural production. You know, by giving them tractors to farmers. So how come other state governors are not actually following suit because uh, the lands belong to the government? So yes. how come they have this uh, expanse of land and uh, they're not really doing so much in terms of um, boosting local production of food? So uh, again, what Taraba uh, State Governor has done is a step in the right direction to help cushion a lot of effects for the local farmers there. Because one of the issues farmers are facing is that they don't have tools to work with. If you know the cost of those tractors, it is a lot of money to purchase mm -hmm. one unit. So if they don't have tools to work with, and it's difficult to do everything manually, these days you can, you know, you can grow products, and within a couple of weeks, if you have the right tools, they begin to germinate with the right tools and fertilizers. And again, if we do not solve our food security issues, the problem. So other governors of other states, other 35 states, also need to look inward too. We must, you know, in incentivize our farmers. We must look at ways to provide uh, you know tools for them to work with and also give them you know incentives like loans grants you know for them to be able to be you know to because if you look at the, the one of the issues that we're having now uh, the cost of production by these farmers is is alarming in a country where farmers will build roads to their farm in a country where farmers will generate their own power in the countries where farmers will generate their own water is a problem so mm. that's why when they put out these prices for these food items it, it, it's about beyond the last time I checked, it's close to almost 8,000 there. True. 8,000 there. I had to go to the market myself some weeks ago. I'm like, how, how, how did, we, did we even get here? <laughs> so most times when my wife tells me this is the cause, I, I look at, I, I, thought, I, I feel maybe she's even trying to inflate things. Back. But it's, it's, I had to go to the market myself last week and it was, you know what I mean? So it was just uh, a complete disaster. So, so I think that, um, again, all other state governors, particularly the states that have these land masses, I mean, the good thing, the not. That's why a lot of these farm productions are done from the north because they have very, you know, reasonable landmass for them to work with. And we need to just look inward and also make them have this, you know, level playing ground where and, and also an enabling environment for them to, you know, farm effectively. And so when those produce are, those uh, items are being produced, then it's going to be able to be distributed around the statistics state, and it will drastically reduce the price for the price for food. Mm. Everybody is shouting, there's no food, there's hunger in the land. You saw those protesting in the north, they were shouting, Akoin you are. Oh, there's hunger, there's hunger. That's, that's so, any, anybody who is angry will be pushed to do a lot of things. You can see the complete disaster, total breakdown of lawlessness in the north going on right now. Mm. And that's why even the governors could not curtail it. That's why they have to declare, declare coffee. Okay, over time, the federal government uh, says uh, that it is distributing grains, uh, millet, uh, corn and um, you know some of them these are you know seedlings and to farmers but over time I've had to speak with uh, people who are really involved in farming they say that sometimes most of these in incentives that the federal government uh, brings about does not really get to the farmers themselves the core farmers that he mentioned something one of my guests one time mentioned something as a uh, political farmers that uh, yeah. These interventions and these uh, so-called, uh, you know, seedlings or you know, even grants for farmers don't get to those who actually need them. Yes, that's 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 not that's not far-fetched. I mean, we in a country where grants are being given and incentives are given, but it does not get to those that actually need. To look at it played out during um, the past few days where some certain governors were giving bag of rice, mm. and it was and we saw we saw people, you know alleged videos on Instagram where. People were, you know, rebagging those bags of rice to, for resale. Mm. Those are bags of rice that were supposed to be for the commoners, the hungry people. So these are issues. Even during the time of COVID-19, we saw it too when, you know, palliatives were given and it was stacked up somewhere and people were diverting it for their personal use. So these are issues. And one of the other issues that, were, is, that, that, that led to our food inflation is also insecurity. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's why I said at the beginning of my speech that the issue of our national security is a matter that we cannot, you know, play politics with. Is something that can break our mouths as a country. Look at what is happening in Bangladesh. Look at what is happening in Kenya. Look at what is happening in different. So, so if you don't, if you're not careful, look at look at Mali. Look at Guinea. Yeah. Look at Burkina Faso. These are countries that military is taking over. So we need to be very careful to be sure that. That's why I particularly like the 
press conference by the you know the armed forces yesterday mm. that co comprises the military and we saw that they were trying to you know bring out solutions to say let's look at immediate solutions to solve this problem so it does not degenerate mm. so insecurity is one of the issues that we're facing that's why you can have a farm somewhere in, in, in um, uh, Wasim, mm. to go there sometimes might be a, uh, it's always a problem for me because of our roads are not safe Aside from bad roads, I'm not saying because you can any, anything can happen to you. Insecurity. That's why farmers are aside from the headsmen and mm. farmers clash. Even insecurity. Just last week, some people were bombed in in Bonun. About, about 19 people died in the in the interior part of uh, the you know Bonun. So those are so those are issues. So you are not you are not sure what will happen to you because our roads. Do, you know how many street lights do we have working? How many security operatives will you see on the road going to those farms? So farmers now, right now, needs to be, I mean, a level of security needs to be provided for farmers. Mm. So we need to, first of all, identify those farms, those people doing well to say that they want to produce foods so that we can consume. We need to give them security because if, a, if somebody has invested billions of money in putting up a farm and he cannot even get there due to the fear of insecurity, that's mm. a problem. And that's why we have gone back to the days of importation. To the slightest toothpick, we go back to import. So that's why. So, so the government, aside from giving them in incentives, they need to provide securities for these farmers. So that's speaking, about, speaking about in, um, um, security and how yes, it, it affects um, uh, food and agricultural um, production, do you really think that um, is a, is an issue of um, the security uh, operatives or architecture being overwhelmed or not really knowing how to nip all of these issues in the board, or do we have to start looking? Uh, in the light of uh, maybe uh, neighborhood security, like that it is being done here in Lagos, or just you know maybe hunters uh, association coming together to secure themselves to secure farmers. Because at the end of the day, like you said, if we don't secure the lands, the farmers, we are the ones that suffer. So, 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 so the issue of security is a joint effort from not just the police, yeah. from even local operatives, from the neighborhood world to vigilantes to. So I think there needs to be an holistic, you know, formation in that area. Nigerian police force, like I said, we have just three, 371,800 policemen in Nigeria. They cannot, they cannot effectively, yeah. you know, secure the whole of the country. We have, 20, we, have, we, have seven, we have 774 local government. How do they want to, yeah. you, know, you know, cover the whole, the whole of those areas? Even some parts of these Lagos, when something happens to you, before the policemen will get there, it might take them hours because, because of proximity issue and traffic sure. issue. So, so those are issues. So the earlier they, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of synergy between Nigerian police force, neighborhood watch, and, you know, even local vigilantes yeah. to help provide succor and, you know, security for these farmers. It's not so much of a, a joyful thing to have invested millions of money into farming. And you, are, you cannot even wake up one morning and say you want to protect your farm because of the fear of, you know, what could happen to you on the road, because yeah. of the fear of being kidnapped or because of the fear of, you know, even being killed on the road. So our security architecture needs to, I mean, something has to really change. Yeah. The government needs to come to, to protect these farmers. So that's why, that's why, that's, that's one of the root causes of where we are today as a country. Yeah. A country where we have people that want to really go into farming, but the, the insecurity is the fear. And that's it's one of the setbacks that we have. Okay, just, just the other day, the, the first lady came out um, <laughs> with some um, vegetables that she supposedly um, harvested, you know, from right her... inside uh, four corners of her house. Four corners of her house, and uh, although it actually uh, drew some sort of um, controversy as about the length of time and all of that. Yeah. But uh, the, the main uh, uh, discussion in all of that is um, substance farming. Now she was encouraging people to go yeah. back into farming that um, you could actually uh, plant some of the things that you need for yourself, maybe your vegetables and maybe your tomatoes and um, some other little things. That, but just how far do you think pockets of that can really go? So I think, I think, I think that's, 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 that's also a good step for her because I think that um, a lot of us have gardens in our houses that are just lying there, you know, it's full with weeds and all that. So small, small, even even immediate family within our own compound can also help us. Yeah. We cannot uh, we cannot totally rely on local farmers alone. We ourselves can start to farm something as little as vegetable, as little as tomato at the backyard of our houses. And before you before you know it, it will gradually reduce the stress on these local farmers because how many local farmers do we even have? There are not much. A lot of them have been you know chased away because of the time that we have, that we have the X-Men Earth, clash and all that, so yeah. that's why we're saying that let's also imbibe the culture of 
starting to you know produce something locally within our four corners of our houses that, that would also reduce this uh, stress on the food prices because when people who are produced at a very high cost takes it to the market oh. and they see that there is no deep there's no so much demand oh. they will be forced to bring down the price because just like in economics the higher the, the higher the demand the higher the price oh. the lower the demand the lower so when they see that there, 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 there's lower demand they will be forced to bring down the price mm. but when they see that demand is high everybody is bringing out you know selling at different prices yeah. and that's one of the problems that we have okay so as we go now your final word on all of this uh, as regards food security and uh, food importation and the uh, reduction of taxes as we round off so again you know, i mean for the controller general customs to come up to, to, uh, to come up with that uh, you know idea i think it's a noble idea it, it will help us you know in a short time but again we must be very careful not to allow it to the effort of our local, manif uh, local farmers. All right, we'll rest it at that. Uh, we need uh, to encourage um, food production. We need to encourage uh, our local farmers to produce. And even all the incentives that are being done or given by the federal government, we need to be sure that it is getting to the right farmers. And uh, in as much as uh, we say this all the time, government alone cannot do that. We need to put all hands on deck you know, to secure ourselves. So the local uh, vigilantes and local hunters in neighborhood security can even do so much in terms of securing our land and farm us as we go on then this is it is also a call to state governments to you know do so much to ensure that agricultural production you know takes center stage in their state so that way nigerians can actually go to bed with them food in their stomachs that's the size of the show for today i must say a very big thank you to you mustafa i will love for your thank time you. and you of course your wonderful input always on the show thank you for all right, my name is Justin Akadonia Business Insights returns to your screen same time. Bye for now. <laughs>